What's up? It's your girl, China Diamond. Uh, I want to say first off, I love you for my to my friends, my family, and I especially love you China Diamond fans out there. Today's video log is going to, was um, me answering the questions that I told you guys to participate on with the Ask China Anything video log. So we're going to get straight to this, cut to the chase or whatever. <laughs> and I want to shout out and salute to everybody that paid attention and really like really um like participating in like i really love it. like i can't even consider y'all fans because at the end of the day i like interact with you guys so i don't interact with fans like i interact with people that support me and it's there for me and you know so i don't i can't even i don't even feel right saying i have fans i know i got groupies but i don't have fans i just got a thousand one supporters and i love you guys so much for you know for really supporting me through my career my ups and downs like i really let you guys into my personal life into my business life and everything so i love it and um i'm never too hollywood or hollywood now i'm never too hollywood i'm always gonna be hollywood to you know respond back to any and everything as long as i'll be no stupid crap you understand so whatever um let's get into the questions woo yay woo woo okay <laughs> Um, fix my bow. The first question comes from a good friend of mine named Zon Williams. Let me tell y'all about Zon Williams, okay? I know Zon Williams. He was stationed in the Navy. We was overseas with each other in Guam. So, he's a really good friend of mine. He's a character. I love Zon. Boy, I love him. He asked me today, why do females call China Diamond like to throw birthday cake on niggas? First off, Zion, you want to chalk that up to the game, okay? Because I might let the world know. What happened was, I had a birthday party two years ago. I was 23. I had it in um, overseas, like I said, in Guam, at this club I used to work at called Foxy's. I got wasted, you know. I got really wasted. And um, from my memories, like, I didn't even make it at 12 o'clock, honestly. But we had, like, this huge birthday cake fight. And I ended up throwing cake on my niggas on. And it was a, a polo. It was a, a limited edition polo. It was a July edition polo. And it was $80-something dollars. And I threw cake on him. And that cake stained that good old polo. And now he's mad. He still be hassling me about it. Well, you got to charge that up to the game, like I said. Because you ain't getting that, that money back. And if I see you again, I'm going to throw cake on you again. <laughs> I love you, Zion. <laughs> anyway, the next question comes from another good friend of mine. I don't know why my friends like to ask me all these questions when these, these people got my number. <laughs> but it comes from Rosa Johnson. Rosa was once again overseas with me in Guam. She was uh, in, the, in, the, in the Air Force, but she's still in the Air Force. She asked me, she says, why haven't your raggedy ass visited me yet? Well, Rosa, before you start talking about, about somebody being raggedy, let's not get on them dreads, boo-boo. Okay, but we not, I'm not going to put that on the, on, on, on the media real quick. We're gonna, I'm going to let you have that one. Rosa, I'm going to visit you. I, you know I be busy. I got everything going on. My career be taking me, taking off. I be everywhere. Boo, I swear I love you. Rosa, I love you. I'm coming to visit. Uh, and you know I'm about to be 25 next month on the 25th. I mean, not the 25th, on the 31st of December. How I forget my own birthday. Whew. Anyway, I'm coming. To, I'm, you know, I might be down there to visit you. So, chill out. I'm coming, girl. I love you. You know you, my boo. Next question comes from uh, a handsome guy named Ty Watkins. He asked me, do I date white men? Uh... No, I've never dated white men, but will I date one? I will date one, you know. But, you know, white guys, they uh, tend to be scared of me. I don't know why, but they always attracted to me, but just been scared of me. But I think a lot of situations, they're just curious, you know, about the brown girls or whatever. <laughs> Shout out to the white boys. You know, options are open or whatever. Well, options was open before I got into my situation I'm in right now. Well... So, uh, yeah, a lot of sexy white boys out there. Yeah, yes, they are. I guess that's Lord, they are. Sweet Jesus. But, you know, like I said, the options were open until I got into my situation that I'm in right now. You know, my boyfriend's going to kill me when he sees this, but, you know, I'm just answering his questions. Next question. <laughs> Come from underscore, and it's Twitter now, at Forever Aaliyah. 
What made you start stripping and was it something I intended to do after high school? Well, Miss Forever Aliyah, that was a good question. And that and you ask, asking me that question let me know that you are open-minded to understand why did I make decisions I made and you're not judging me. Okay. No, it was nothing. This was nothing I had never decided to do. Like, you know, nobody want to be a stripper, you know, when they're kids. Not the first thing. I mean, more so, it's more so a girl's fantasy because it's something they want to try to do. But that's not nothing that I wanted to do. Actually, when I got out of high school, I worked at a college called J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College in Richmond, Virginia, the downtown campus, um, when I got out of high school or whatever. And, um, you know... I honestly always wanted to do what I'm doing now is model and have uh, a clothing line that I'm working on. This, I always want to design clothes. You know, anybody tell you that I've actually set in classes for that in high school. And, um, you know, sh me resorting to stripping came from a lot of dumb decisions I made younger. When I, in my younger days, when I was younger, I was like 18, 19, I made a lot of dumb decisions that led me into getting into legal problems, legal troubles. And um, at the end of the day, what what like decision I made, it 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 wasn't gonna stop the fact that I had kids and I still have bills and financial problems. Well, so I started dancing as a quick hustle, you know, to pay to still take care of my kids, to also invest in my career, to still you know put food on the table and to you know uh, make some pies out of it. And I'm gonna tell you guys that not. Strippers and entertainers are, are two different things. I'm an entertainer. There are girls out there who make that money at the club and just go home, go to sleep. It's just money. Then you got some of the girls who do the other thing they do. I'm not going to get into that. Y'all know what it is. But um, that was a good question, you know. Um, at the end of the day, I'm still a published model. You know, I never said I was a role model. But I am the voice to let females know that you don't got to be ashamed of doing what you're doing because at the end of the day, nobody's going to pay your bills but you. So if you are a dancer, you know, forget what everybody else got to say, you know, because what they eat don't make you boo-boo. <laughs> not, I'm not, uh, also, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not cussing. You know, I'm going to try to frame from that. <laughs> that was a good question, though. Thank you, baby. Um, next question comes from at big underscore G Bentley. Will you be my date to All-Star Weekend in Houston? Um, me and my management and my model sisters and team or whatever, we're already planning a, uh, a trip to Houston, Texas next year. So uh, if we bump into each other, it is what it is. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> You're just going to have to just find out, sir. <laughs> the next question comes from at... Measy so live 24 so when are you going to follow me back okay i didn't know you was following me on twitter but i will follow you right now as we speak i don't have a problem following nobody back you know what i'm saying as long as you're not a pervert and as long as you don't say none of that stupid in the way stuff to me i don't have a problem following you back you know what i'm saying i love following everybody back it's just a way for y'all to interact with me or whatever so yeah, I follow you back. I'm never too Hollywood. Like I said, I'm always Hollywood. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I follow you back, baby. It's nothing. Um, next question comes from at his, at underscore his Cam Camaro baby. Did you ever consider having a personal assistant? Yes, I consider having a personal assistant because when I go on the road, when I have to travel to do these photo shoots, I tend to forget stuff because a lot of times, nine times out of ten, like everybody will tell you, I'm a busy body. Like my head runs, my mind constantly goes a thousand miles per hour and my body don't keep up. So I end up forgetting stuff that I really need. And if it wasn't for my head being attached to my shoulders, it would have been a ran off, rolled off my head somewhere. So sometimes I do need a, um, a personal assistant to help me. To help me stay on track. But um, the, the offer's open. I mean, I am taking offers, so it is what it is. I live at a hectic lifestyle, so yeah. I would love personal assistant. That would be cool. <laughs> Next question comes from at Static Real 239 and he says, marry me. Uh, I don't have a, um, a problem with marrying you. As long as my boyfriend says, okay, I, I'll marry you. You know, it is what it is. I We could do it just to say we did it. You know, as long as that, that ring is a nice size piece of rock, we, we, well, yeah, we could do it, baby. <laughs> um, the next question comes from at underscore Elanine. I'm going to have to spell that out for you guys. 
E-L-H-A-N-E-M. She says, hi, we know that with success and exposure, one's circles can become a problem. So my question to you is, are you able to see the difference between genuine people in life and the phony ones from Samia, Samia and Paris, France? I talked to Samia on Twitter already. She's a very pretty pretty woman. Y'all go follow her. And she's from Paris, France. So for somebody to tweet me all the way from Paris, France, let me know that I am international and that I really do have people that pay attention to me like worldwide. Like that is so cool. So shout out to Samia and Paris, France, baby. Um, Yes. Once I really did started like really getting successful in my career, like I've noticed that people were starting to act different towards me, maybe because of some of the fact that I was progressing and they were stuck in, in time, like they were stuck in a Kodak moment, meaning that they career or they money wasn't wasn't doing too good and mine was was so I've heard from you know, through other people, like they'll say certain things about me and I noticed certain things that people would say about me had to come from certain people that I've had in my circle because don't nobody know my business. So for the outsider to come and tell me something that they heard that somebody from my circle said really hurt me because at the end of the day, they let me know that snakes don't only just crawl on their belly. Snakes can walk on their two feet and also be in your circle. So the only way to kill snakes is to cut their head off. But I didn't cut my friend's head off. Instead, I just cut their lifeline off around me and just, you know, I just pray for them. You know, I, I try to, like I said, I try to change my ways. So I just learn to, you know, just pray for people. But it really did hurt me when I, when I found out that some people was, you know, jealous of me or they was talking about me. And, and honestly, like a lot of my friends stopped being friends with me when they found out I was a dancer because don't nobody want that reputation of being cool with a stripper. But you know, at the end of the day, your friend is your friend, regardless of thick or thin. You know what I'm saying? And when I learned to make positive out of the situation that I put myself into with the dancing, that's when all of them wanted to come back and be friends. Like, girl, I knew you was going to be something. I knew that modeling was going to take you far. No. Er, what you thought was that people was going, you thought people was going to drag my name through the dirt and talk about me and you didn't want to be affiliated with that. You didn't want no you didn't want to be known as a girl that 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 that's cool with oh you're friends with a stripper. I don't want to be friends with you no more. So what a lot of them did was cut me off. And you don't do that. That's not right. That's not a real friend. That's called fake and phony. So that was a good question, Samia. I had a brain, you know, I had to snap out of it. Because that was about to go left field real quick. But that was a good question. And now my circle once was big. And now it's like this big. <laughs> but I'm happy and I'm blessed. And I pray for everyone that, you know, left me back in the day. You know, when I didn't have nobody else. I pray for y'all. Next question comes from at Murph underscore P. How did you come up with the name China Diamond? Okay, when okay, that's a good question. Um, I'm Puerto Rican and black, but when I was a baby, I had pink, pink skin, jet black eyes. I and I had a dark black hair that had an Al Fifa thing going right here. And, uh, you know, Al, you know that that dude Al Fifa, Al Fifa from Little Rascals. He had that. Thing that stuck up in the back of his head. Well, I had that same thing. So everybody that's swapping down, I was Chinese, I was Asian. They just knew I was something with some China, China something. So they just said like a little China baby. So for a long point in time, you know, that I just thought that was a cool name. Like people even like after when I got older, like a certain way how I used to wear my hair, it was jet black. Like it was they say you like a little China doll. Oh, so I when I really started getting into the modeling world, I um, switched my name to China Doll. But it was just so many China Blacks, China Reds, and everything. So I switched it to China Diamond. Now, that was back in the MySpace days when I started doing my China Doll. So I just switched it to China Diamond and because I like diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. And it's tatted on me. And I took this name and branded it and made it for myself and made some out of it. You know, and it's catchy. Like, China Diamond. Like, And I got a lot of hate for it. People ask me, like... What the hell is a China Diamond? Well, bitch, I'm a China Diamond. This is China Diamond. Pow! This is what it is. And, you know, like I said, 
Um, you know, and honestly, China Diamond, the persona, like, I'm from New York City, New York, but China Diamond, the persona, came out of Richmond, Virginia. And I've been living in Richmond for, like, six, seven, eight years. You know, I've been living in Richmond for a minute, so that persona came up out of, uh, China Diamond came out of Richmond. But I was born in New York, so, uh... I just think it's about time because we don't have like a lot of popular models. Matter of fact, we, I don't know no popular models that came out of 804 Richmond. So I think it's about time that I go ahead and do that. You know what I'm saying? I go ahead and put my city on and, you know, and, and be the first one that came out of Richmond, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, we don't even really too much got any famous rappers that came out of Richmond, Virginia like that. I mean, it's a lot of local hood artists and there's a lot of local hood models that are popular. But for somebody who goes mainstream like I'm doing, it's it's, it's rare. Like, um, I never know nobody to go. Oh, um, I want to say the girl Carice. Yeah, she, I think she's doing something. She's one of the fleet models like I'm doing. But, you know, I haven't really heard anything too much from her. But as far as my understanding, no, it's not really that not popular. People came out of 804 models. So I think it's about time I do that. Shout out to 804. I love y'all. I love Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, I love you guys. Like, it's crazy. I love New York, too. But everybody out of New York, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, I put on for New York. This way I put on for for VA. You know what I'm saying? Mess around, still catch catch me around uh, off of Nine Mile Road somewhere. Or you might catch me off Broad Street. Or you might catch me uh, in, in, in Henrico or Churchill. I'm telling where you catch me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just be all over. Well, I used to be all over. But, you know, you still catch me going get, you know, in them corner stores in the hood. <laughs> or whatever but um last question comes from another good friend of mine her name is diamond but her twitter name is at msdc8701 do you have good advice on dating someone with kids oh crap hold on a minute yes i that's a girl, I don't know why you didn't call my phone and ask me that. But anyway, girl, yeah, of course. I am. I have two kids. And I'm dating someone who don't have kids. But he's dating some me that I have kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, that my advice to you is that, you know, when you date somebody with kids, you know, you that's a package deal. So if you really take your significant other serious, then, yes, you're going to have to learn how to take. You're going to have to accept everything, the good and the bad. You know what I'm saying? And, you know... Kids is one of them. Not saying that you got to step up and be somebody's stepmom or somebody's stepdad or whatever. But just accept, you know, accept the fact. Treat treat, treat their kids as if they was your own. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, treat them as kids and treat them like they was your own. But I just hope that whoever you date don't still have baby daddy, baby mama issue because that's a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother topic. God almighty. Baby dad, baby mama trauma is the worst. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, Jesus, I could go on about that. Oof. Anyway, girl, I give you big, I give you props and respect, girl. Just watch out for them crazy ass baby mamas. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that was, um, that's going to sum it up all today for the baby mama. I mean, the ex China anything. Girl, I got my head going about that last question. That's going but that's going to sum it up today about the uh, ex China anything video log. I really do appreciate everybody that participated. And then let me know you guys really do pay attention a little to me. I love it. I really do love it. And I take everything you guys say to me. I take all the negative and positive criticism but for the most point i can say i do get a lot of encouraging words from everyone like y'all don't understand that really does put a smile on my face to see that people say china don't pay attention to the negative you you are you you i love your movement i i support your movement like a lot of people really do tell me they support what i do and i love it i really do love it i love you guys so tune in for the next video log and Stay tuned. Mwah! <laughs>